Good morning. I'm going to continue uh, this little series through through Philippians 1 this morning. I thought I'd come inside. Uh, outside it's uh, kind of dreary and windy and I was worried that uh, uh, the wind would interfere with the mic and you might not be able to hear me. So I moved up here in, in my study. Uh, I'd like to read from verse 6 of Philippians chapter 1. Being confident of this very thing, that the one who has begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. Usually when I've referred to this verse either in sermons or referenced it here and there in, in some other, you know, milieu of teaching or something, I've always emphasized the wonderful promise of this verse in regard to human sin. Uh, I've emphasized that even human sin, which is so destructive, uh, has no power to thwart the purpose of God's grace in the life of the Christian that the one who has uh, begun the work of our salvation, he will continue it, he will finish it. And there is nothing in our corrupt hearts that can dissuade him in his wonderful purpose. This morning, I wanted to talk about another aspect of this verse's promise. It speaks not only to the circumstance of our soul-destroying sin, but it speaks also to the impotence of the circumstances of this life, no matter how painful, to undo God's purpose of grace in the Christian life. This is a rough time, and my suspicion is it's going to get more rough before it gets better. And Christian, I want you, and myself as well, I want us to be encouraged in the knowledge that there is no circumstance that can dissuade God's grace from accomplishing its purpose. The Apostle Paul in Philippians 1.6 makes it very clear who it is that's doing the work in the Christian heart. It isn't the Christian who's lifted up as the source of spiritual success. It is the one who has begun a work in us. In other words, our Heavenly Father, with the arsenal of His power and His grace, He is the one Christian who is working in you. And there's nothing that can thwart Him in that purpose. Our sin cannot stop Him. The circumstances of this life, including a quarantine have no power to stop his grace. Even death itself has by Christ been rendered powerless to stop the great locomotive of God's gracious salvation within every Christian heart. It's been really encouraging for me to, to notice how many pastors and musicians and others are exercising every means at their power to continue to serve the body of Christ and to encourage Christians during this challenging time. The church throughout her history has been a stubborn being. You will not silence her or stop her or eradicate her, certainly. And all of those enemies and circumstances that have tried to destroy her have all gone by the wayside and she is still here. And the stubbornness of those musicians and pastors and teachers, their stubborn devotion to getting the grace of God to you through whatever medium necessary is reflective of a greater stubbornness. The stubbornness of our Heavenly Father himself he has, Christian, ordained that you will arrive safely in heaven, that there is no force that will stop him in this great purpose for your life. As I thought about that, within myself, I said to the Lord, Lord, 
will you please help me to finally lay hold of that lesson? I don't know about you, but sometimes the realities of this life, its discouragements, its very real pains, can make me believe that eventually life is going to rear up like some, some great tsunami wave and just roll over me, and the grace of God and all it's accomplished in me is going to be left annihilated. Well, I need to remember, and it was my prayer to the Lord that through this I would be taught and see with my own eyes that God's grace is not so easily thwarted. In fact, God's grace in you, Christian, and in me cannot be foiled at all, not an inch or an ounce. And I made it my prayer this morning to the Lord, I said, as we eventually step out of this situation, will you help me, Lord, to remember the lesson that I've learned? As I have witnessed the stubbornness of your grace in my heart, as I have witnessed its stubbornness in the hearts of your people, may I see with my own eyes the face of the God who is so unyielding in his purpose for me. It may be true that this life can knock us down. It can beat us to the left or to the right. It can leave us discouraged and feeling ravaged. But we can be confident of this very thing, that it isn't our power that promises our victory. It is the hand of God that has reached itself into our lives and by the power of Christ, has guaranteed our successful arrival in the harbor of heaven, no matter what seas may toss us. Let's remember that together. And let me pray that God's Holy Spirit would teach me that all-powerful lesson that the stubbornness of my God is greater and stronger than any force in all the universe. Heavenly Father, as we struggle day by day with different kinds of discouragements and temptations and fears during this time, we pray that the Spirit of Christ would press upon our hearts this little message that we have heard today. That it is not our power that decides our success, that we are not the ones who are at the helm of our own soul, that it isn't our skill or strength that will guide us home. It is the mighty arm of God himself. And you have begun a wonderful work in us through the blood of your son, Jesus. You are a God who completes his tasks. You are a God who brings to finish all that he starts. Heavenly Father, give us the power in your spirit to remember that and to be encouraged to the core of our being that with this one truth that there is nothing that is going to snatch us from your hand. There is nothing that will rob us of our eternal life in Christ. Let us, Lord, for your glory and our peace, be thus encouraged. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. See you tomorrow, and God bless.